Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming to the nutrition um, seminar this morning. I am Sharon Piotrowski, and I do have WM. I was diagnosed in July of 2019. I'm supposed to tell you a little about myself besides that. So I am a personal trainer. I've been one for coming on 13 years with ACE. So this is so up my alley because nutrition and exercise go hand in hand. So I'm really excited to be here today, and I hope you all have been enjoying this conference, and I am very happy that they asked me to be the moderator today. So again, welcome. But we are really here for Margaret Martin. It is my pleasure to introduce Margaret Mar uh, Martin. She is an RD. Margaret Martin is a nutrition education ed educator, registered dietitian for over seven years with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's Pearl Point Nutrition Services. She provides education consultations by telephone to patients and caregivers and contributes to the ever popular Nutrition Handbook. Make sure you get one. Margaret brought some for you. Um, the Nutrition Handbook, LLS Health Manager app and website nutrition content. She is a licensed dietitian and nutritionist in the state of Tennessee, as well as a certified diabetic care and educational specialist with more than 10 years of hospital expert experience in clinical nutrition. She was awarded the recognized Young Dietitian of the Year in Tennessee, where she has served on various committees and in leadership positions. Very impressive. In her free time, Margaret loves to garden, watch Alabama football, travel, and has walks her two dogs, Rose and Chiquita. So let's all welcome Margaret um, Martin to the stage here. Well, thank you for that kind uh, introduction, Sharon. Um, good morning, good to see everyone's smiling face today and good afternoon and good evening to our virtual office uh, audience. We do have one more copy of the Nutrition Handbook behind the <clears throat> camera there if you need, need one projector. All righty. Well, so glad to see you all today. It's been a wonderful conference. This is my first uh, Ed Conference, Ed Forum. So thank you so much for the invitation to be here today. Well, let's get to know each other a little bit, if that's all right. Please stand up, if you will, if you are a Waldernstrom's survivor. Any survivors or people with a Waldernstrom's diagnosis? All right, quite a few. Stand up if you're a caregiver or care partner for someone with Waldernstrom's. All right, so we've got about 30%. Wonderful. If you're a healthcare worker, any healthcare workers here today? And stand up if you're confused and you're in the wrong room. <laughs> that happens sometimes. <laughs> well, I bring greetings from the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. We also call that LLS. Um, our mission here at LLS is to support patients, caregivers with blood cancers, and to cure leukemia, lymphoma, Hodgkin's disease, and myeloma. We fund research, as we've heard about this week, um, for life-saving treatments. In fact, since 2017, LLS has helped bring to FDA approval more than 70% of the blood cancer treatment options, so we're very proud to be involved in research. We also drive advocacy to help uh, form policies so that patients can have access to life-saving treatment. Uh, and, sorry, he told me not to touch that button. <laughs> and now he's gone. Oh. All right. <laughs> and as we're doing today, we also provide um, patients and families with hope, guidance, education, and support. And about 25 of our participants here this week have come and shared with us that they are enjoying our financial support options. So, so glad to meet you all in person. We are talking about nutrition today. And the nutrition program of LLS is called Pearl Point Nutrition. Uh, Pearl Point is an unusual name, but does anyone uh, remember Minnie Pearl? Howdy! I'm so proud to be here. Well, Minnie Pearl, her legal name was Sarah Cannon, but Sarah was a, a cancer survivor and as part of her legacy to the world was helping fund um, and 
provide access to good cancer care and education. So Pearl Point originally was the Mini Pearl Cancer Foundation. <clears throat> We're a nonprofit organization, part of LLS, and today's presentation is for information only. Please always consult with your health care team before making any changes in your medical regime, diet, or physical activity. Just a word about our nutrition resources. We have a beautiful website if you wonder where we are <laughs> on the World Wide Web. Uh, we're at pearlpoint.org slash mynutrition. On Pearl Point, we have six tabs, including nutrition, where we have strategies to help you manage by diagnosis or by uh, side effect. We have meals and recipes tab, which also has the food safety guidelines. <clears throat> and we have specialty tab areas for caregivers, like you wonderful folk, and healthcare workers, and for survivorship. On our resources tab, we have very helpful uh, check checklists and worksheets, as well as our nutrition blogs that we we post uh, monthly. One of our premier services that LLS offers for nutrition is our one-on-one -on -one nutrition consultations. These are done by telephone. Um, they're available for patients and caregivers of all uh, with all cancer types not just blood cancers. So that's a little bit unique um, service at LLS. There are three ways to make an appointment for your nutrition consultation. Um, you can call us directly at that phone number, 877-467-1936, or you can call one of our wonderful information specialists at LLS at 800-955-4572. If you're a techie and like to make your appointments online, you can use our online calendar at lls.org slash nutrition. <clears throat> well, how did I get here? <laughs> I know how you all got here with your diagnosis, but I have a strong family history of cancer. My father was diagnosed in 1980. My mother was diagnosed in 1999 and my sister in 2011. So. I saw both sides of the story. One is a healthcare professional and the other is a caregiver trying to encourage them to eat and prepare different foods for them. Food is very personal though, isn't it? <laughs> it's one of the few things sometimes we have control over on the cancer journey. Someone else is making your appointments usually and you've got uh, visits for imaging, blood draws, treatments, <clears throat> scans. Uh, so food is sometimes one of the last things we really have control over. So I know it's a very personal topic. Today we have um, four topics or four goals. One, I'd like to present a overview of healthy eating. Um, two, look at some food challenges with Waldenstrom's and some suggestions or strategies to help manage those. Three, share some resources with you. It's always good to have new tools in your toolbox as you go go through life. And four, we'd like to leave uh, time for questions, of course. <clears throat> so I love the topic of our presentation today, nutrition, a fresh ap approach, because um, sometimes nutrition is all about limiting choices. But my philosophy is to encourage you to try new foods, flavors, taste, textures and beverages um, to help help you be well nourished. So we'll look at some choices. We'll also review some facts for nutrition and Waldenstrom's. We'll also share some solutions. Not all solutions work for everyone, but hopefully you'll find a, a tip or a strategy that might work for you. And then again, we'll look at resources. Well, there are very many nutrition choices, aren't they? Aren't there? I made this word cloud of all the different types of diets people tell me as I'm consulting with them that they're following or think they should follow. Um, some of these are based in science using the uh, evidence-based approach. Some of them are based in, on social media, aren't they? <laughs> so I encourage you not to use social media for your decision-making on to what to eat, but rather 
use good information to empower you to make the best choices for you and your journey. I may be the expert in nutrition, but you are the expert in you, right? So you have to choose what's right for you and any other health conditions you may have. So let's agree on some facts. First of all, there's not one specific eating plan for Waldenstrom's. In fact, there are many healthy eating plans that are suggested, which are nutritionally balanced. And some of these plans might work better for one person or another. Rarely does anyone I speak with in their nutrition consult just have Waldenstrom's or just have cancer. They may also have arthritis, diabetes, um, hypertension, food allergies. So you really have to <clears throat> individualize a food plan for each person. So the eating plan that might be your choice should help you not only manage your side effects, but also support overall health and wellness um, to help you support your other health conditions. <clears throat> And of course, your eating plan must fit into your food resources and preparation abilities. Um, we all aren't chefs or gourmet <laughs> grocers, uh, so what we choose to eat has to really fit into our lifestyle and our budget, doesn't it? <clears throat> well, what are some benefits from healthy eating? Um, one, I feel eating healthily helps you feel stronger. As you probably know, Cancer and treatments destroy healthy cells and tissues inadvertently. So you have to eat well, eat often to rebuild those healthy cells and tissues. <clears throat> Eating healthily can help manage some of your side effects like appetite, weight loss, anemia. Um, eating healthily can also help you guard your cognitive function, help you with your executive decision-making skills and alertness. <clears throat> Healthy eating can also help you decrease complications. Um, working with a registered dietitian on a regular basis at your cancer center or in your community has been shown to reduce hospital admissions, unplanned hospital missions, and treatment breaks. <clears throat> and of course, healthy eating helps us support our immune system, our robust uh, vitality for life. <clears throat> So let's take a little quiz here. Um, I know it's early, but it's fun to take a quiz. Of these four choices, what is the healthiest choice for people on their Waldenstrom's journey? A, get on the keto diet. B, choose a plant-forward eating style. C, go on a crash diet to lose weight. Or D, only use alkaline water. Um, so let's see here. <laughs> what would E be? <laughs> oh, there you go. All right. Uh, so besides not having an E, um, which is a choice, but um, I recommend choosing a plant-forward eating style. And we'll try to unpack that and see what that means. <clears throat> Just a word about, I did have a patient. He was 68 years old when he was diagnosed with cancer. He was a retired football coach. His wife, his caregiver, was a retired PE or physical activity, uh, physical education teacher. And once he was diagnosed, what did she do? Went on the internet and looked, you know, what should he be eating? Um, when you make an appointment to speak with one of our registered dietitians, you fill out a short questionnaire and his Complaints were no appetite, rapid weight loss, <clears throat> and anemia, along with diarrhea from his, from his treatments. Um, his treatments, in fact, had to be postponed because he was too weak and too frail to continue. Um, so we'll talk about him a little bit later. <clears throat> what does plant-based eating really mean? Well, the professional group to which I belong, oncologynutrition.org, that's part of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, they define some plant-based eating steps as make plants the majority of your plate, bowl, blender, <laughs> or um, sandwich. 
What does that mean? We'll try to fill at least half of your plate with vegetables or fruits. They can be fresh, they can be frozen, they can be cooked, um, they could be in a smoothie or soup. <clears throat> Choose whole grains often for health purposes and to reduce the risk of future cancers, it's recommended to at least get three servings of whole grains a day, if not more. And aim for mostly minimal processed, minimally processed foods. There's a whole continuum, isn't it, of food processing in our world. We've got the whole foods and the minimally processed foods that Mother Nature provides to us. It might be an apple, a potato, an egg, an orange. <clears throat> um, it might be pieces of meat. And then we have ultra processed foods where sometimes a potato is turned into french fries. That might be an ultra processed foods. Or an apple might be turned into, say, apple pie. <clears throat> so ultra processed foods often have nu nutrients removed and other components added back, such as saturated fat, sodium, and sugar, along with some preservatives. So it's recommended to use ultra-processed foods on a limited basis or occasionally, but mostly try to stick with minimally and moderately processed foods <clears throat> to get more nutrition for your food dollar. And plant-based eating, um, has options. You don't have to remove animal products if you don't want to from your eating plan. <clears throat> so looking at our food picture here today, looks like a bowl of cooked foods and the arrow is depicting what could be protein. Uh, might be a chickpea patty, a quinoa cake, or it might even be a chicken, uh, a chicken patty. So it's all up to you and what you enjoy and what um, works best for your body. If you want a more definitive explanation of what plant-based eating is, I would encourage you to think about the New American Plate from the American Institute of Cancer Research. That's a nonprofit organization and they fund research about the relationship between cancer food, nutrition, and physical activity. So they suggest if you look at your plate, bowl, or blender, or sandwich, uh, fill half, uh, excuse me, fill one third of your meal with protein, could be from plants or animals, and the remainder two thirds of your meal could be from plants, grains, veggies, beans, fruits, nuts, seeds. <clears throat> and you can read more about New American Plate on their website. If you like a more definitive look at the different food groups with plant-based eating, uh, USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, has a wonderful website called myplate.gov. And they look at what are some recommended ways to put together meals. Um, so in their scheme, proteins are at least 25% of your plate, and you could include dairy. Grains or starchy veggies um, would be 25%, veggies 25%, and fruits 25%. If you're looking for an eating plan, if you go to myplate.gov slash myplateplan, you can put in your own data, you know, your age, physical activity, level, gender, and it will generate a suggested meal plan for you, which is kind of cool. So proteins can be from plants or animals on plant-based eating. Uh, in this example, it looks like we have a beautiful Mediterranean salad with perhaps some um, seasoned tofu with vegetables, olives, perhaps some uh, olive oil dressing. That could be a plant-based meal, maybe with some croutons. But on the other hand, if you had kebabs, that could also be the start of a plant-based meal with chicken and various colors of vegetables. Now, some people want an exact name of an eating plan, which I understand if you're trying to lean into the plant-based eating. So every year, 
you may have seen this, U.S. News and World Report sets down a criteria of healthy eating, and they explore what might be the healthiest eating plans for the year. So I wanted just to bring with you, bring to you what they think are the healthiest, three healthiest plant-based diets. Let's see, I accidentally got into that. Is that on the screen? No. Okay, good. All right. And where's my helper when I need him, right? <laughs> there we go, I got it, sorry. So an example of plant-based eating might be the Mediterranean meal plan. Another example is the flexitarian meal plan. What is the flexitarian meal plan? Any suggestions or thoughts? Yes, Jan. Uh, my interpretation is it's primarily plant-based, but you don't limit outside of that. So you can have meats, fish, but you do that primarily. So Jan said that the flexitarian meal plan is basic, might start out as vegetarian or plants, and then you, you can add other choices like chicken, in my opinion, chicken, turkey, fish, eggs. Um, so it's a more well-balanced meal plan, it gives you more types of protein and iron sources. So it's flexible for you. That, I like uh, that term. Um, the, the third top meal plan was the MIND diet, M-I-N-D. Anyone heard of the MIND diet? Um, there's been research exploding in the last five or ten years about what helps our mind, what helps our thought processes, and what helps us slow down um, neurodegenerative changes. Well, the MIND diet encompasses both Mediterranean and the DASH eating plan. It's, it's an intervention for neurodegenerative uh, delay. So that's kind of a fun meal plan to look up if you're interested. Who knows of the DASH eating plan? Anyone heard of DASH? Okay, Sharon. Um, DASH is an acronym for Dietary Approach to Stop Hypertension or High Blood Pressure. It was developed from a study that NIH funded. Um, so that is also a healthy eating plan. Mediterranean and DASH are also recommended for people with arthritis. Um, also, if you have blood sugar or um, hypertension problems, heart problems, those are good choices as well. What are some benefits of plant-based eating? And I like the word eating or eating plan versus diet. Um, who likes the word diet? <laughs> I don't, I don't as a dietitian. It sounds very limiting and punitive and short-term and joyless, but an eating plan is options, it's choices, it's flexible. Um, but, so what are the benefits of plant-based eating? Well, we, had a great, we have a great blog on our website that plant-based eating can help fight cell formation and rapid replication. Also, plant-based eating can help you rebuild healthy cells and tissues. Uh, plants have something called phyto chemicals or phytonutrients, which are a good thing. <laughs> Phytochemicals help protect your cells from being destroyed at the cellular level. Um, Plant-based eating can help regulate hormones in your body and reduce certain types of inflammation. Um, phytochemicals decrease DNA damage at the cellular level. And it can also help you reduce other risk of other diseases, um, other cancers and other chronic conditions like diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease. So what are the steps to healthy eating? Well, one, I think, starts up here. You know, what do you believe about foods and your healthy eating patterns? Um, I hope that people believe that it is the healthy food patterns over time that really help us promote our health and well-being, not single foods. Many times when I talk to people, you know, they want to know, well, what, what are the best vegetables? What are the best fruits? What are, what are the power foods, the superfoods? 
well, it's not just one food that's going to help you rebuild your tissues and support your immune system. It's the diversity of all those foods coming together, working together for good absorption and your metabolism. Um, so I like to think about patterns, not single foods. Another reason to have good variety is because of your microbiome. What is the microbiome? Anyone in, want to shout out an answer? <laughs> well, our microbiome is a collection of our gut bacteria, and also our microbiome is in our skin and other organs. But it helps maintain the balance of your immune system. It's a collection of good and bad bacteria. Um, there was a project called the GUT Project, G-U-T. Anyone heard of the GUT Project? <laughs> well, they looked at the eating habits of people, and people who ate 12 types of plants or less per week had the smallest and poorest microbiome. Um, a type of food might be e each single food, like potato, banana, green bean, uh, oats, wheat, rice, broccoli, etc. So if you only had 12 types of plants per week, their microbiome was, we'll say, the weakest. We would like our microbiome to be strong and robust. 80% of our immune cells are made in our gut microbiome. So we want that to be a happy place <laughs> for, the, uh, for the gut to flourish. The opposite end of the study was people who ate 30 plants or more per week had the most robust and highest quality microbiome. So if you have wheat bread, if you have rice cakes, if you have oatmeal, you know, those are three types of plants. And you might have broccoli, tomatoes, cauliflower, carrots. Those are four types of veggies. You might have different nuts. So each type of food is is what they're talking about. Yes, ma'am. So you say that if, if you have like wheat bread every day, does that count for seven or, or is this only one? That counts as one type of food. So it's helpful within each food group as you can to kind of mix up your grains. So you might have wheat bread, but later in the day you might have brown rice, you might have oatmeal, you might have quinoa with supper, um, you might have some whole rice cakes uh, or crackers. So try to mix up within each food group to have different plants. And know your dietary restrictions. Many of, we're going to talk some about medications here, but based on your treatment, your side effects, uh, your disease, and other conditions, you may have some dietary restrictions. Um, some people I speak with are lactose intolerant, so they have to minimize how much lacto uh, lactose they take in. Some people, for whatever reason, can't have a lot of insoluble fibers because they might have IBS or diverticulitis. Um, so it's, it's important to know your dietary restrictions so you can work around them. And of course, Waldenstrom's reduces your immune system, doesn't it? Makes you more likely to get an infection, whether it's from the outside of your body or it might be a food, foodborne illness. So know your food safety guidelines and those from your cancer center, cancer treatment. So let's talk about some dietary restrictions. Um, treatment protocols are unique and they have their own dietary restrictions, things to stay away from. So that is a great question to ask your healthcare team. Do I have any dietary restrictions, you know, based on my protocol or my disease? So some require you to space antacids two hours after medication. Um, a brutineb has no grapefruit or no Seville oranges. Um, what food do we eat often that has Seville oranges in it? That's right, orange marmalade that's made with Seville oranges. Um, Veneta clax, no grapefruit, star fruit, or Seville oranges. And xenobrutinib, no grapefruit or dietary supplements unless improved. 
Um, So any dietary supplements that you might take, like that's a good question, vitamins, minerals, um, green powder, um, different uh, probiotic tablets, you, all, you should get those approved by your treatment team before you take those. The reason being, you know, an orange, a regular orange might have 60 milligrams of vitamin C, but a vitamin C tablet might have 300 or 400. And that's considered a, a mega dose. <laughs> and sometimes the mega doses that are in vitamins may support your cancer instead of helping you decrease your cancer. Um, but that's a great question. Thanks for asking that. Um, and the timing of your medications is important in relation to meals. Some med medications require that you take it on an empty stomach. So people come up with their meal and medication plan to separate those those time frames so work with your health care team to know yes sir what is the effect of grapefruit? grapefruit often intensifies the or causes the medication to keep circulating in your body is the way i understand it not a pharmacist so that it can become toxic Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's sharing that he's on hy hypertension medication, which has a restriction of no grapefruit because it intensifies the action of his high blood pressure medication, which can cause him to have a low blood pressure incident. So uh, hypertension medications and some cholesterol medications say don't take with grapefruit. Good point. Thank you. So looking at our food on the screen here, um, do you see any of those uh, dietary restricted foods listed? The grapefruit, yes. I think the others might be spinach to the left, pomegranate, and maybe some type of uh, white bean. It's come out now as pomegranate, also not Okay, it's good, good to know, pomegranate can be on the restricted list. Right, fish oil, we talked a little bit about that yesterday. Um, some of the medications, fish oil supplements are not recommended, but you can still eat food, uh, fatty fish, because it has safe amounts of fish oils in them. What about food safety? Well, there's at least four steps to food safety in the big global picture, and that's cleaning your hands and the food, like plants, uh, separating your meat and proteins from your other foods, like plants that you might be chopping, uh, cooking them to the right temperature, and we highly recommend using a thermometer. You can no longer tell if a meat is cooked by the juice that comes out when you remove it from the oven. Always use a meat thermometer. And chill your foods within one to two hours after preparation. Um, don't leave them on the counter. Um, if you're having a buffet or a family celebration, you know, try to rotate the food. Um, then there are other nuances. There may be foods that your treatment team is asking you not to use, such as bean sprouts, which are very difficult to clean. Um, Sometimes berries are difficult to clean because of all the crevices. Um, how do you wash plants like fruits and vegetables? Well, we recommend that you wash under running water so the motion of the water can help remove dirt and debris from any fruit or vegetable. Always rinse before cutting. And you don't really have to use any soap or vinegar or any of the clean veggie products that, that are out there. Many people are really sensitive to those and they may have a reaction. But use running water and maybe a produce brush to loosen some of the debris on your food. We have other information on food safety in our nutrition handbook as well. All right, second and last brain teaser. <laughs> How do you manage your side effects from treatment? Um, 
A, people tell me this, they ignore their side effects. They're, they're not going to hurt me. <laughs> B, they might do an internet search for answers. C, research your trusted websites. D, ask your treatment team. They know more about you than any internet site will know, right? They have the big picture. Or E, which is C and D. What do you think? E, I knew you, I was hoping you'd say that. That's right. So E, only use trusted websites for your nutrition information and ask your treatment team because they have the whole picture of you. They know you, what medications you're on, what other conditions you may have, and um, if you have a side effect, they know which medication might be suggested for you. Now here at LLS, we have a page on our website with over 27 side effects during cancer and suggested nutritional tips to help you manage those. Um, so I find that to be very helpful for many people. Well, let's look at some other solutions to help manage side effects, um, such as weight loss, no appetite, um, fatigue. Number one, eat on a schedule, not by hunger. This is as an example of how adult nutrition, it can be very different from oncology nutrition. <laughs> There's a difference. In adult nutrition, we say, be mindful, only eat when you're hungry, often, right? Stop when you're halfway satisfied. But in cancer care, especially with Waldenstrom's, when weight, unintended weight loss is a huge problem, um, we're encouraging people to eat on a schedule. Every three or four hours, have a smart snack or a meal. Some cancers and cancer treatments actually disengage or destroy our hunger signals, sensors up and down our digestive tract. So if you wait to eat, to, if you're hungry, you're probably not gonna eat enough. Um, use small amounts of foods and beverages, but eat often. Um, one meal planning tip I always share with my patients is, you know, have a balanced meal. A balanced meal starts with foods from at least three different food groups, one being protein. Um, so have a protein, have a vegetable, have a grain, or whatever combination you'd like. When we have a variety of food groups at a meal, we get different nutrients. Um, and those nutrients can help you absorb some of the nutrients better. You can also feel better when you have a combination of foods rather than if you just sat down to a bowl of popcorn every night. <laughs> Popcorn's a whole grain, but it's only one food group, right? Um, feel free to modify your foods to help you easily digest them. Um, again, adult nutrition, we might think of, oh, I need to be eating salads every day. <laughs> I need to um, eat lots of juice and fruits every day. I need to eat nuts at snacks. Or some of those foods are really hard to digest if, if you already have some digestive issues. Um, through treatment and through aging, guess what? We make less digestive enzymes as we go through life and make less digestive hormones. So it's okay to modify some of those foods. Instead of having nuts, if they give you gas or diarrhea, try nut butters. If vegetables themselves give you um, bloating, try vegetable soup or vegetable in a blender or cooked vegetables. Uh, so modify the foods to help you digest them easily and help you absorb them. And pay attention to what foods and beverages work well for you um, and try to use those often. Don't try to dwell on what other people drink and eat because that might not work necessarily for you. And eat more when you feel the best. <laughs> Some people um, say breakfast is my best meal of the day. I'm so hungry in the morning. Uh, so try to eat a little bit more then. Or it may be the afternoon you feel the best. So try to eat a little bit more then. 
All right, so let's look at some ways to manage fatigue and anemia. We'll try to pace yourself. You are like a really expensive luxury sports car. You need premium fuel to get where you're going every day and to meet your deadlines. The only limitation is, instead of having a 20 or 24 gallon gas tank in your luxury car, your gas tank is only three or four gallons. So try to fill up small amounts, fill up often, so that you'll have fuel to reach your destination and your goals. Um, ask for help from other people in shopping and preparation. I don't know about you, but you know, shopping and cooking, it's take some energy, doesn't it? It takes some muscle and endurance to stand up to chop or um, be able to stir things on the stove. So ask for help from other people. Save your energy for actually eating and absorbing and metabolizing your food. Um, try to choose three to five iron-rich foods a day. Uh, Wilden's drums does cause anemia. Food is not curative for that or is it Food is not a cure for cancer, but it gives us a great foundation, doesn't it? A great uh, protection to help our body absorb and use the foods well. Um, Iron-rich foods are in almost every food group except for dairy. <laughs> so, of course, meat and fish and poultry have the most absorbable iron, but there are some great iron foods in iron-rich cereals, very economical. <laughs> Uh, also, nuts, seeds, and vegetables, and some fruits have iron. Use physical movement daily if, if you're cleared medically for activity to help fatigue. Physical activity is clinically shown to help you manage fatigue. And hydrate, especially, and nourish your body on a schedule. Um, balance that hydration with your food. Um, some people here at the gym, they should drink a, a 100 ounces or 150 ounces of water a day. Does that leave food for uh, room for food? Usually not. <laughs> so be sure you're not overhydrating and under, under eating. Um, it includes foods each day that are good sources of protein, vitamin C, folate, calcium, and fiber. fiber. Well, what is scientific or evidence-based nutrition? We've touched on that a little bit. Um, one study I read said that about 80% of the nutrition facts on the internet are incorrect. <laughs> That's overwhelming. And, um, so how do you decide what is correct? Well, one way is to use trusted websites um, like cancer.gov, um, Siteman, the Washington University, cancercenter.edu, lls.org. Um, if you want to read studies, try to concentrate on studies that are related to humans, not animals or plants, in large population studies that could be replicated by another scientist. So try not to make decisions about food when the subjects are just 10 or 20 people. That's how research starts, doesn't it? With small studies, but then it grows into larger studies. And look at professional websites like IWMF.com and others for trusted information. Use food first as a source of nutrients. Uh, each food has multiple nutrients in it, doesn't it? Whereas sometimes a nutrient pill might have one or two nutrients in them. So nutrients from food have been well absorbed by our bodies for thousands of years. Um, so we don't know always how absorbable other dietary supplements are. And don't expect supplements to lower your cancer risk as well as a healthy diet. And of course, some supplements can cause negative interactions like we've talked about before with grapefruit and pomegranate. Try to maintain a healthy weight. Uh, unintended or rapid weight loss can trigger in inflammatory, inflammatory processes in our body and is illustrated by this graphic, it can burn lean body tissue for energy. Lean body tissue, part of that is muscle, and we want to keep as much muscle as we can. 
Uh, rapid weight loss can reduce our strength, our plasma levels, cells, and body tissue. And it fails to regulate our hunger hormones as well and ultimately compromises our immune system and can decrease our quality of life in response to treatment. Well, how much weight loss is too much? Well, studies have shown if you lose more than 5% of your weight in one month or more than 7.5% of your weight in three months, that's a red flag that you need help keeping your weight on. So they're listed, if you're a 150 pound person, 5% weight loss would be 7.5 pounds and 7.5% weight loss would be 11.25 pounds. So rapid weight loss has been associated with negative outcomes. Eat the rainbow is a healthy eating step. Uh, strategy. Mother Nature makes seven different color families. Each color of the food represents different phytonutrients that help us maintain healthy cells and repair. So it's okay to eat white foods. I often hear people say, I don't eat anything white. Well, white foods are good. Garlic, some white mushrooms, onion, cauliflower, and then brown, green, yellow, orange, um, red, purple, blue, and black foods. In the big scheme of things, one goal about color might be to try to eat four to five different colors of food uh, plants each week. So I hope today you've been empowered to think about more variety of foods, the timing of your meals and snacks, how much to eat, try new textures that you can actually absorb and digest, uh, there's a variety of eating plans that might be recommended. Um, we have lots of resources from LLS that you can check out and that are listed there in your handout. Um, we have information specialists. We have clinical trial nurse navigators if you're interested in a clinical trial. Registered dietitians. You can either call us or go online at lls.org slash IRC. Um, we have some beautiful publications like our Nutrition Handbook, our Food Assistant Resources and Tips. Uh, we have Waldenstrom's information and a beautiful caregiver packet that if you call the Resource Center, you can um, get in touch with that. We have a great smartphone app. Um, you can put reminders on your phone for eating and taking medication and drinking. You can make a grocery list. You can look up strategies to manage side effects, and there's capability to share your app with your caregiver if you want them to go to the grocery store for you. <laughs> um, looking for Mediterranean eating style resources, oldwayspt.org has some great resources on getting started with the Mediterranean eating. We've talked a little bit about the New American Plate. Uh, the National Cancer Institute has a beautiful booklet you can download called Eating Hints. It's free. And then USDA MyPlate.gov. So now we'll take a couple of questions. Thank you very much. So would anyone have a question? Would, are you able to come up to the microphone? Well, we'd like for the stream. Uh, you're all good. Okay, wonderful. Oh, oh, you want to stand here? All right. There you go. Thank you. I'm alone, and when I'm sick, uh, I will get a lean cuisine, um, and it doesn't feel healthy, but it's just something to use. What do you recommend for people that are alone and they're ill and they're not able to prepare? And I don't really have people to come in and do it as often as I need. That's a great question. What do you do if you're on your own and you don't feel well? Well, I recommend partially or fully prepared meals. Like many of our frozen dinners now have much less preservatives than they did. So Linguazine and some of those other brands are a great choice. You can get pre-cut vegetables, pre-cut fruits. You can get rice and grains that really are pre-cooked in a little bag and you just warm them up in the microwave. 
Um, so I suggest you keep some of those in your pantry and in your freezer so you could use those. So just a word about the small frozen dinner. Sometimes they're not filling completely. So feel free to add some toast, a fruit, or something else to go with that if you'd like. That's a great question. What other question? Yes, sir. Do you have an opinion on balance of nature? Balance of nature it's is a, a supplement of sort. It's a dietary supplement. And like all supplements, you need to ask your doctor about it. But my understanding is, you know, it's freeze-dried fruits and vegetables made into a powder. So to me, it's a processed food. So I'd rather you eat your food if you could, <laughs> if there's any way you could eat it. Okay. What other questions today? Please, Sharon, go ahead. Well, actually, going back to this lovely woman's question about lean cuisine, is yes. it important to read, if you're going to buy, let's say, prepackaged food, not necessarily processed food, that is healthier, but it's frozen, would it be helpful to read those labels on the back and make sure there's not so many words in there that you don't understand? That's a great point. Our nutrition food labels are a great source of information and guidance. You may know they were updated about two years ago. Um, so if you're looking at the food labels, you probably want to find a, a dish that has 600 milligrams or less of sodium per serving. That's one idea. And saturated fat, um, lower amounts of saturated fat. If you look at the label, if it's a bread product or grain, you know it's whole grain if the first word in the ingredients is bran or whole, like whole oat, whole wheat, whole rice. Um, but nutrition labels are your friends. They can tell you a lot about what's going on in that food. Hi. Um, Go ahead, Jan. One of the things that um, diets and um, uh, recommendations don't generally take into account is the fact that a lot of us are not alone and we have to eat with someone and when we're cooking and preparing we can't just prepare for us. I've, I've tried to adopt a plant forward and um, my wife is a very meat focused kind of person <laughs> so you know if we do tacos I'll do lentil tacos and she's fine with that or okay. we'll do um, a plant-based chili but you know, she needs to have her meat, and the fact is it's very difficult to cook two things at the same time. How, how do you suggest you deal with that? Well, that's a great question, because um, if you're cooking with other people or for other people, it helps to kind of have an agreement. You know, how many meatless meals maybe a week um, are we going to have, like the lentil tacos or, um, or whatever... Um, burrito, whatever you might be thinking. And um, some people are willing to cook a, maybe a chicken breast or a piece of meat for their loved one that wants animal products. Um, but that's one extra step. But I think it takes negotiation and I think it takes um, creativity to think what is the easiest way for me to honor her at the meals where she does want meat. Good question. Okay, um, it's actually just two quick ones, but okay. there's a lot of information in the media about dirty fruits, you know, the whole thing of you shouldn't be eating blueberries because of the whole, um, I don't know, pesticides or whatever on them. What do you recommend now? You said using water, running water, but I almost feel like I shouldn't be eating blueberries anymore. Well, some uh, plants have more exposure to pesticides than others. So there is an organization that every year publishes the Dirty Dozen, and those are the foods that may have the most um, access to pesticides. So some people use that list to buy foods with less pesticides or organic. Oh, okay. So that's one way to do it. Um, but the pesticides are most dangerous for the agriculture workers. You know, the, the risk to us is people who enjoy those foods, it's very minimal. But we do still recommend washing with running water in a produce brush. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. The other um, question I have is what happened to our patient? Oh, I forgot. I forgot to follow up. So, yes, so, oh, okay. Well, we were able to help him and reintroduce foods back into his menu, so. Um, Yes. Well, thank you all for being here today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Please wait one second because I have some announcements. First, again, let's a round of applause from uh, thank Mar Margaret. That was fab. I don't know about you all, but I learned a lot. So thank you so very much. All right, some quick announcements. First, thank you to everyone that has attended today, virtually or in person. We really thank you for that. Um, I am grateful to you all for asking your questions. I hope the feedback was good. Make sure you do your um, scan and give us the um, survey evaluation. And those at home, it should pop up on the screen after this video. So you're going to take a break until 1030. Go do what you need to. Grab some coffee. Check out of your room. And then remember, at 1030 is the ever popular Ask the Doctors. Again, thank you so much for everyone being here. <laughs>